So let's pray again. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you that we can worship you, the almighty God. Father, we lift up your word unto you this morning. And we pray that you would bless your word as we listen to your word. Father, that you open our eyes to see wondrous things from your law. And so that your word will not just challenge us, but will transform our thoughts and our mind so that the meditation of our hearts and the confession of our mouth be pleasing to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So I'm going to share with you this morning on the, on the prayer of Paul. Now, Paul has many prayers in the, Old, uh, in the New Testament, but I picked up uh, this prayer from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. Now, after learning this prayer, I have been so blessed by this prayer. So blessed that I literally lift up this passage uh, today. So let me read from verse 1 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may run swiftly and be glorified just as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you, both that you do and will do the things that we command you. Now, may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. So this is the word of the Lord. So Paul uh, starts chapter 3 with a request uh, to pray. Now we know that Paul, I consider him a super apostle, uh, 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 really a veteran. Uh, in the field, in the ministry. But yet, he asked the saints to pray for him. You see, that means he really subjected himself to the sovereignty of God. Why? Because uh, praying is total dependence on God. No matter who you are, whether you are a super apostle or just a layman, but we need to pray. Everybody say amen. Yes. Now, here I'm not talking about just, you know, the normal prayer. Uh, doa biasa-biasa yang kita makan, uh, then we pray. Not that type of prayer. But really, uh, a prayer that is sungguh-sungguh. Paul says this, be diligent in prayer. That means it's just not ordinary prayer, but be diligent. And he also says, pray uh, unceasingly. That is, pray always. So that means we need to seek the Lord, be diligent in prayer. Why? Because we need to commune with God. We need to be connected with God all the time. As believers, if you are saying that you are a Christian, you are a believer, you cannot live without prayer. Because why? We need to be connected with God all the time. And so Paul asked the Thessalonians to pray for him because he believed in the prayer of the saints. And the Bible says the prayer of the saints avails much. The prayer of the saints avails much. So do we have saints in the house today? Amen. All of us, are we saints? Amen. So the prayer of the righteous avails much. So if you believe that you are saints in the Lord, therefore what you pray really matters. And what you pray avails much. And so here Paul, he asked for certain or very specific prayer. Uh, let's look back at verse 1. It says here, Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may run swiftly and be glorified just as it is with you. And so the word here, Paul was saying, pray for that word. The word here could refer to the proclamation of the gospel truth or even the teachings uh, that Paul brings to the people. 
So it could be both the proclamation of God, the gospel truth, or the teachings of the word. And so Paul asked for two things about the word. And one is that may the word of the Lord run swiftly. And then secondly, be glorified. Run swiftly, meaning that may the word of the Lord just spread, spread rapidly, run swiftly. It will uh, reach to even a, a greater multitude than just here. So this was the request. And that's why, you know, Paul, he travels extensively just to fulfill this, that the word of the Lord may run swiftly. So you just imagine for, uh, with me for a while, Paul, he is from Jerusalem. So uh, down south Jerusalem. So he goes all the way up to Syria. And then from Syria, he goes to Asia Minor, which is today Turkey, right? From Asia Minor, you know, from Cappadocia, Galatia, Asia Minor, and then uh, Macedonia. Macedonia is already Europe. And he wants to go all the way to Rome just for this purpose, to spread the word so that the word of God may run swiftly and will reach the multitudes. Wow. Now, today we thank God that we do not have to travel extensively like, like Paul. Why? Because uh, God has blessed us with technology today, especially during the COVID. God has given the church creativity to use technology, to use the, um, like the social media, uh, the digital platform. And praise God, the church has uh, gotten into that platform. So I myself has uh, gotten into the platform. You know, during the COVID or just before COVID, I really travel extensively like Paul, but not all the way to Europe. I'm just Sabah and Sarawak. <laughs> so every weekend, without fail, I will travel. I am hardly here uh, in Kota Kinabalu. So I travel extensively to the rural areas and just do seminars after seminars with especially the students. But during the lockdown, I cannot travel anywhere. I cannot do ministry. So like it's like ministry lockdown also. And then during that time, there was one brother. And, and he is in Semenanjung and I'm here. And so we did a Zoom meeting and he suggested to me, he says, uh, Danny, why not you record all your teachings and put it online? Uh, because during the time, it was very new to me, all this thing online and digital platform. And so I gave serious thought to that decision. I said, okay, I will try. And so I began to uh, record all my apologetic teachings in Bahasa. And then I put it online. And I find it works. Because even though I cannot travel during the lockdown, but my messages, the teachings, the apologetic teachings can travel can travel to places that I cannot go or I, I, I have not been. And that's so amazing. And so I saw something new. And then at the same time, uh, the wife of this brother who gave me that advice, that wife, she is a fan of Derek Prince. Some of you, you know Derek Prince. Huh? You can Google. He is a wonderful Bible expositor. So he loved, I mean, she loved Derek Prince and she has been so impacted by the teachings of Derek Prince so much that she says, I want to write a personal thank you letter to Derek Prince. But she found out that Derek Prince has already passed away a long time ago. Wow, then she, she said, even though Derek Prince has passed away a long time ago, but Derek Prince is still working. Through his messages that's online. And so this brother says, Danny, even if you're not around, you can still work <laughs> through the messages that's online. Yeah, that makes sense. And so, you know, this verse, verse one, has injected a fresh uh, inspiration to my vision in the work of the ministry. So now, you know, I want to do the work of ministry just for this purpose, that the word of God may run swiftly. 
and be glorified. Amen? Yes. And wow, the, the vision, my vision and mission, mission suddenly is just refreshed again. And I begin to be excited. So now I don't do, these few months, I don't do much traveling like before, but I'm still very busy because I begin to prepare all my teachings to put it online. And it's amazing because I may not be there in Sarawak, but my teachings can reach even Sarawak. So this is amazing. This is the tool that God has given us. Now, I am not saying, I, I want to clarify, I'm not saying that we don't do any more mission trips. But I'm saying in addition to that, you understand? In addition to that, this is something we can use. And I think we, can, we, we should make full use of this. So use your gadgets. Use your gadgets and share the word of God. You know, there was one sister who I read her story. She woke up one morning and suddenly she realized that, wow, in her Instagram, she has 10,000 followers. Wow, that is something amazing for her. 10,000 followers, finally. But suddenly she came to reality. She said that, wow, actually, in the end, God will not ask you how many followers you have, but how many disciples you have made. It's not how many followers you have, but how many disciples you have produced. So we want to pray that the church, especially LBC, will not just attract followers, but will be a church that truly makes disciples. Amen. We don't want to get mixed up with numbers. There is a divine purpose for us to be here on earth to make disciples. And so may the word of the Lord run swiftly and be glorified. And so the second thing about the word is be glorified. So the question is, how is the word of God be glorified? The word of God is glorified when people respond to the teaching of the word. When people respond to the proclamation of the gospel truth and sinners are saved and therefore the word of God is glorified. Amen. Yes. That's it. The Word of God is glorified when people begin to respond to the Word of God and act upon the Word of God. So today, there's a very, very important application for all of us. And that is, every Sunday, when you come to the church and you hear the teaching and the preaching of God's Word, how do you respond to the Word of God? How do you respond? Do you just listen, yeah, I have done my Sunday service. And then you go back, you are fulfilled because you have attended church. So if you have listened to the Word of God and you do nothing about it, you do not respond, then the Word of God is not glorified in your life. You just do Sunday service. So may this remind us stir within us our heart that we will come to church. We will not just listen, but our hearts will be sensitive to what the Spirit have to speak to us. Amen. No matter who is sharing or preaching from this pulpit, but that your heart is ready. I believe this. Whenever our heart is ready to listen, no matter who the speaker is, I believe that the Spirit will speak to our hearts. The Spirit will speak to our hearts. But whether your heart is ready to receive and whether your heart is sensitive to receive. So when you respond to the Word of God by doing what God has called us to do, then the Word of God is honored and is glorified. So why Paul uses this picture of run swiftly? It is the picture of a sporting event the sporting event in such that let the word run swiftly so that when it reached the multitudes 
and the multitudes begin to respond to the word of God, then God's word will gain the victory and be honored like the sportman who wins a medal. Amen? The word of God, let the word of God run swiftly and be glorified. And we see this fulfilled in Acts chapter 17, uh, verse 1 to 4. It's in the screen, the passage. Let me read for you Acts chapter 17, verse 1. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. Then Paul, as his custom was, went into them, and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them from the Scriptures, explaining and demonstrating that the Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead, and saying, This Jesus, whom I preach to you, is the Christ. And some of them were persuaded, that means they were convicted, and a great multitude of the devout Greeks, and not a few of the leading women, joined Paul and Silas. So you see here, in just a short period of three weeks, with the preaching of the, the Word of God, a church was born. People respond to the Word of God. And then the multitudes were added in such a short period, right? But with the growth of the church comes also growing opposition against the gospel and the people of God. Because we see in the next verse, I just continue from Acts 17. Okay, verse 5. I just read 1 to 4. Now look at verse 5. It says here, But the Jews who were not persuaded, that means not convicted, you know, becoming envious, took some of the evil men from the marketplace and gathering a mob, set all the city in an uproar and attacked the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. And so that's why the second prayer request that Paul asked for is to pray for the messengers of the gospel. Pray. So come back to 2 Thessalonians verse 2. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for not all have faith. Now we can learn from this verse that the preaching of the gospel uh, is not always plain sailing there will be opposition. There will be persecution. And you see, Paul knew that the persecution will come. And very interestingly, Paul never prayed, God, please remove this persecution, remove this opposition. He never prayed like that because he knows that persecution will come. In fact, Persecution is very much a part of his life. Agree? It's very much a part of his life. And you know that Paul has been persecuted so many times. He has been imprisoned in and out. He has been beaten and so forth. And he has been shipwrecked and, 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 and all those things. And then he says, uh, the unreasonable and wicked men. Do you know who are they? These are the Jews. That means uh, Paul's own people. Paul's own people. So Paul faced opposition from his own people. And that's why sometimes when, when a believer, when someone comes to Christ, he or she will receive opposition from his own people, even from his own family, be it husband or wife or the family members, and this is real. But Paul says this, he says that even though I face opposition from all these people, from my own people, but let not the gospel be hindered by this opposition, but let the word of God run swiftly and be glorified. Amen? And we see Paul lift out this commitment. He really lived out his commitment because why he was imprisoned many times. But you know, even in the prison, 
he never stopped preaching the gospel. Do you know that in the prison, he wrote a few epistles? Do you know that? Do you know how many epistles he wrote in the prison? How many of you know? Sunday quiz. <laughs> four. Four letters. And do you know what are the four letters? Oh, now you Google already. In the prison, Paul wrote Philippians. In the prison, Paul wrote Ephesians. In the prison, Paul wrote Colossians. In the prison, Paul wrote the little letter Philemon. These are amazing, amazing letters. From the prison, he can produce amazing letters. And he still preached the gospel. Nothing could stop him. He says this uh, in Philippians chapter 1. I want you to see this Philippians chapter 1. Now remember, Philippians was written in the prison. And he says this, But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for, for what? For the furtherance of the gospel. So that it has become evident to the whole palace God and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. This is so amazing because even in the prison, he took opportunity to share to the palace guards. So just imagine if he had not been in the prison, in the, in the, prison, the officials, the ministers will not know the gospel. So God has put them, God has put Paul there for a very purpose, a divine purpose, that even in the prison, the word of God cannot be chained. C-H-A-I-N-E-D. God's word can never, never be chained. You cannot chain the word of God because God's word must run swiftly and be glorified. Amen. And so verse 3 talks about Paul's confidence. We want to see Paul's confidence here. In verse 3, it says, But the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. Wow. You know, the, the Jews who oppose Paul, who make trouble for Paul, they are the unfaithful men. Unfaithful. They were unfaithful. They were opposing. They were hindering the word of God. Even though the, the, the Jews were unfaithful, but the unfaithfulness of men will never stop the faithfulness of God. Amen? The unfaithfulness of men will never stop the faithfulness of God. And I think we need to hear this. That God will always be faithful. Faithful to the church. Faithful to the people, to us, and faithful to His Word. I think it's in the next slide. Can you see the next slide there? Uh, oh, not yet. Okay. So God is faithful to the people. And we see here, uh, in, we can see a good example here in the closed-door countries. You know, closed-door countries is where the, the government, the religious authorities will try to clamp down uh, the church from growing. But it's so amazing that even in situations like this, even with laws in place and punishment even unto death, what is amazing that the church still can grow. The church can grow even with all these laws in place. So with growing oppression, there is the growing of the people of God. And that's why we get what we call the church without walls. The church without walls. And they appear there, pockets of believers everywhere. And I read in a report that actually the biggest church in the world is actually in closed door countries. Not the building, but the people. And that means to tell us that God will not allow His word to go silent. God will not allow His Word to go silent because the Word of God 
must run swiftly and be glorified. The Word of God can never be chained. Isaiah 55 verse 11. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. And Jesus says in Matthew 16, 18, I will build my church. Who will build the church? Jesus. Jesus will build the church. And because Jesus will build the church, therefore the church belongs to who? Belongs to Jesus. Belongs to God. It does not belong to uh, the, the senior pastor or the council member, but the church belongs to Jesus. Jesus is the head. And because of that, he says this, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Amen. The gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. So this is the confidence of Paul, that the Lord is faithful. Everybody say, the Lord is faithful. Yes, God is indeed faithful. And verse 4 says, And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you, both that you do and will do the things we command you. So Paul has been talking about, you know, preaching the gospel, proclaiming the gospel truth, so that the word of God may run swiftly and be glorified. And God, I mean, Paul is confident, he's very confident that the church will fulfill this mission. And that is the true church. The true church is the church that will proclaim the gospel and will make disciples. That's the true church. So is LBC the true church? Hello? <laughs> Paul is confident. From where Paul gets his confidence? You see verse 4? And we have confidence in the Lord. And we have confidence in the Lord. So Paul's confidence is not in people. Paul's confidence is not in the wisdom of man or the strength of man because men, even politicians, Leadership, counsel can disappoint us. And Paul says his confidence is in the Lord. Because without the Lord, we can do nothing. Without Him, we, can do, we cannot do anything. But with God, we can say like what Paul says, I can do all things with God who strengthens me. With Christ who strengthens me. Amen. So it is not an impossible task or impossible dream that the word of God run swiftly and be glorified. That with God, I can do, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. With Christ, LBC can do even greater and even go beyond. Amen or not? Yes. So we, we, we may be weak. As human beings, we may be weak, uh, we, may be, we may have our shortcomings, but God's work will always be fulfilled. Why? Because God is faithful. God is faithful. And even though God may have to use uh, weak and feeble messengers, because we are humans, but God's ways will always be prevail and will always succeed. Why? Because God is faithful. So we just ride along in God's faithfulness. You see, because the Bible has already told us that God can use the foolish things of the world to shame the wise and the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Amen or not? So if God can use the weak things of the world, the foolish things of the world to shame the wise and the strong, certainly God can use each one of us. 
Yes, God can use each one of us. So what is the application for us to be the true church where the Word of God may run swiftly and be glorified? The application, this is important. We go back to verse 4, now the second part of the verse 4. And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you, both that you do and will do the things we command you. Okay, Both that you do and will do the things which God has commanded you to do. So do you have that desire to do and will do the things that God has asked you to do? It means doing the will of God. Do you have that desire? Do you have that passion? Green one to do the will of God? Because to do and will do what God has commanded you to do, that is what pleases the Lord. That's what pleases the Lord. Just like Jesus. Jesus says, I have come down from heaven to do the will of the Father who sent me. And he says, my food is to do the will who sent me and to fulfill it. That's a very important application for us to do and will do what God has commanded you to do. The call of obedience. Now, if you don't have this desire, it is very burdensome for you to do and will do what God has called you to do. There is an answer and help for us today. And that help and that answer is in verse 5. Verse 5 is actually a prayer. And verse 5 says this, Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. Wow, this is an amazing prayer. That the Lord is able to direct our hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. And we really need God to direct our hearts into the love of God. Why? Because this heart can easily wander away. This heart can easily be distracted. Like a hymn says, prone to wander. Now, we know that we need to be committed to God. Uh, we know that, you know, you have to wake up early in the morning. You have to do your morning devotion. You know that you have to read the Bible. You know that you have to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. You know that you have to pray diligently. You know that you have to serve God. You know that you have to give tithes and offering. You know that you have to come to church. But we are not doing all this. Why? Because we are easily distracted. Easily distracted by the things which are maybe not important. And that's why we need God to direct our hearts. Direct our hearts into the love of God and the patience of Christ. Well, when I learned this, this has become my prayer now. Lord, would you direct my heart into the love of God and the patience of Christ? And I pray this over my daughter every day. I pray this over my daughter. I pray this over my family. Lord, may you direct Hannah's heart into the love of God and the patience of Christ. He, she knows this because she hears my prayer for her. Lord, that you will direct her heart into the love of God and the patience of Christ. That means God is asking us to go back to the basics. This is basic, brothers and sisters, and that is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. You know, if you are sitting here this morning, you are a very young believer, and you do not know much about the Bible, but this is what you can do and start. Love God. That is the basic. You love God with all your heart. And you start there. 
love God. And for us who have been seasoned, no excuse. Love God. Pursue Christ like God chaser. Now, how do we know that we have love for God? How do we know that we love God? The Bible gives us the answer. The Bible says that if we keep His commandments, we love God. And it's just as clear, as clear as that. Keep His commandments. And there are many verses that point us to that. But I want to show you one uh, from 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, it says here, For this is the love of God. What is it? That we keep His commandments. Is it clear? Very clear. Keep His commandments. And then it says, His commandments are not burdensome. It's so amazing. I, I find this was so amazing because the, the Bible is telling us the Word of God is, or, or the commandments of God is not burdensome. Tak membebankan. So if you feel that, wow, doing the will of God is so difficult. Reading the Bible every day is so difficult. Doing devotion is so difficult. It's so burdensome. Then we got to search our hearts. Do you love God or not? Basic. So come back to the basics. Search your heart. aku. You know that song. Search the heart whether we love God. Then when we love God, then doing His commandments are not burdensome. And then verse 4 says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Wow. Overcome the world. How do we overcome the world? And that is our faith. Do you want to become an overcomer? Amen. So the answer is here, the faith. The faith here refers to our endurance in the Lord. Our endure. That means you endure, you persevere. You persevere, you endure. That means you are faithful. So, when I was reading the prayer of verse 5 Thessalonians, direct our hearts into the love of God and the patience of Christ, I was asking God this question. What is the connection between the love of God and the patience of Christ? What is the connection? And so, as I begin to ponder and meditate on it, I got this answer. It's from 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. You see, the love of God. The love of God means that you keep His commandments. You want to please God by doing His will, doing His commandment. And that's what pleases the Lord. But to be faithful in that, you need the patience of Christ. That means you need the endurance. There is, a, there is another version, the same version, uh, the, the same verse, another version says the endurance. That means to, to, to keep the commandments of God, to live by doing the will of God, you really need the faithfulness, the perseverance, the endurance of God with you. And with that, you can faithfully, you can endure, you can persevere to do the will of God. Amen. And notice that it is the patience of Christ. That means we do it all with the Lord Jesus. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. So I see this connection. The love of God and the patience of Christ. And we need both. Love God and endure to do that with God, with Christ, with us. Amen. And so what do we want to pray this morning. We're going to pray that may the Lord direct our hearts into the love of God and the patience of Christ. And let it be your prayer every day as well. Every day. That you will be someone who goes after God's heart. And that you will respond to the word of the Lord. And when you respond, therefore, the Word of God is glorified. And not just today, but tomorrow. Tomorrow, when you wake up. Tomorrow, when you wake up, tomorrow is holiday, a lot of time. So, do 
a quality devotion. Quality devotion is not the quantity, but the quality devotion seeking the Lord, you know, soaking in His presence, being uh, soaked, yes, yeah, soaked in God's Word. And I think we need to be soaked in God's Word. Now, remember this, it is the communion that counts and not the commitment. You got to start with communion first. You know, communion is your relationship. You see, the church, I, I don't deny this, that the church is very committed. The members are very committed. We have commitment, but not many people have communion with God. So do you know, do you see now where are we missing? We are missing the communion part. We are so good at the commitment. We are so committed until sometimes we have got burned out. We've got to come back to the communion. Communion with God first. Because when you commune with God, that's where you get the strength. You commune with God. Because without God, you can do nothing. Amen. Come, let's pray. Well, even before I pray, you respond to God. Just wherever you are, that's your altar with the Lord. And you pray to God right now. You respond to the Lord according to the word today. So that the word of God may run swiftly and be glorified. And even pray that, Lord, would you direct my heart into the love of God and the patience of Christ. So I'm just going to give you a moment. And this is a solemn moment with the Lord. And I just be quiet for a while and you pray as a response. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you, Lord, that your word is alive. And your word is powerful. And because of that, when we take in your word, your life and your power is in us. And so because of that, we can live this life with greater zeal and power because of your word that is in us. And Father, we realize that all this while, we are weak. We do not have the zeal and because we have stayed away from your word. We have stayed away from our communion with you. So today, Father, may your spirit that has spoken to us, that has stirred our hearts, awaken us again, Lord, with a passion for Jesus. With a passion, a deep passion for Jesus. God, so that whatever that we have received this morning will not go to waste, but God will be life-changing for us. Let it be a divine moment, a meeting place where we meet with God, where the deep calls to the deep. Lord, we thank you for the word that has been deposited in our spirit. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you. Thank you.